to make is that when we have a contract in hand on a file and we've submitted documentation to the servicer, not only can you track it and see what's occurring, but you're also going to know that we're going to speak to that servicer at a minimum every other day and in most cases every single day to move the file along efficiently and expeditiously because the way these get deals get done is not by chance. It's by pushing on them, showing them the value proposition of the short sale relative to a foreclosure and ensuring that they understand what is going on in the transaction. The keys to success, again, you know, there's there several bullet points here, but having the proper documentation in a format that the servicer wants, mm -hmm. having a contract at a price that the servicer believes rec uh, reflects market value within a certain percentage guideline, and having a buyer who itself is committed to buying this property. We have those things in hand. We're going to get this deal done quickly and easily. It's when we were missing one or more of those components that we run into problems and the stories you hear about f f files taking a 8, 10, 12, 14 months to get done. Mm -hmm. there, there really is a secret to this that uh, a lot of people don't really still know or understand that we seem to have figured out. Again, a lot of it's through trial and error. I mean, again, this is a new industry. Uh, if anyone out there claims to be, you know, we're the best, we know what we do, we've been doing this forever and ever. Yeah, we've been doing it. Our partner, DSS, has been doing short sales for 30 years, 20 years, 20 years, excuse me. But the volume is what's created all the issues. So finding ways to get the banks to cooperate and work with you is critical. And it's not who you know there, it's what you know within the bank and how you present the information to them. That is the secret to the transaction. Well, with, with, with each of the major banks, uh, and there's about five different major banks that have most of the short sales, I mean, do you as a company have a dedicated person that you're working with? I mean, are there some efficiencies there on your side? We would love for that, and we've been pushing the banks for that, but here's the problem. Most of the banks, and there's, there still go, occurs, is the fear of, of collusion and fraud. Mm -hmm. So the, the biggest concern with short sales today in the banking side is that they're concerned they're not receiving fair market value and that there is fraud occurring. Mm -hmm. So that is why everyone, doesn't matter who you are, a negotiator is assigned typically randomly, although we do have relationships at certain levels in the bank that allow us to, to go in and do things on a mass basis if we have issues or we have problems. You know, we have a very strong relationship, you know, with unfortunately one of your competitors who we do a lot of work with, but we've developed a relationship where we have the opportunity to ask questions, to get guidance and counsel if there are circumstances that we feel need to be addressed. And we do it in a manner, and I do training seminars all over the southeast for realtors, and the key to, to working with these folks, if you're going to do it yourself, is to understand that, like yourself, they're looking to get deals done, too. They're looking for people who want to work with them and work with them in a manner that they both can cooperate and get things done. Too many people I talk to look at this, the short sale as an adversarial transaction. Well, if you look at it from an adversarial perspective, you're going to get an adversarial response. If you look at it as you're trying to partner with the bank to resolve a problem and you follow their guidelines and procedures, you're going to get deals done. Now, everyone knows the banks say, well, they've lost my package 12 times, they've done this, they've done that. Yeah, it's, it's a volume issue, which we see some of those problems disappearing. But again, doing it in a, in a manner where you're expeditious and efficient will get things done faster and, and, and more effective for you and your seller. But that's why we're here. Right. We don't think realtors should be doing it. Firstly, whether you choose to do it or not, that's your business. But we're offering a very viable solution for those that are looking to say, hey, I can take on 20 or 30 listings. There's a lot of good property out there. There's a lot of people I want to help, but I need to back off a system that will really allow me to be my best, and perhaps it is FRT, and we can explore that with you. So let's talk about the communication piece here. So the realtor does get out there, knocks on doors, and, you know, cold calling, what have you, and he can get 20, 30, 40, 50, you know, short sale listings of people who want to get out of their situation. What is the communication piece like? How do they know you're actually doing the things you say you're going to do, making the calls you're going to be making, and really moving the transactions through? Again, that comes down to the, to the, to the web-based system. When you log into the system, you're going to see all the activity and all that's occurring on the file, all the additions of information, of documents, of updates, of notes. It's all there in black and white for you to review. If something doesn't seem right or you're concerned that you're not getting the proper attention or perhaps the, the processor in our end has missed something, you have the ability not only to talk to that individual regularly, which we highly recommend, because, again, that person's part of your team. They mm -hmm. may be on my payroll, but they definitely work for you. Right. Furthermore, you have 
the, the supervisor of the group who herself is a, a 15-year veteran of loss mitigation that you can talk to and say, I need help with this. I'm not getting satisfaction here. And then finally, you've got either myself as the administrator of the system, mm-hmm. of the system excuse me, or others in the corporate office that can say, hey, guys, we'll take care of this for you. What's the problem? We'll help you out here. It's, again, communication with us, communication with our team, communication with the servicer. That's how things get done. How many people are actually involved in this uh, with your company? Well, let's just take it as a sample file. You know, the, the, with an attorney involved in a file, the, you have the, uh, the realtor, potentially the realtor's assistant, mm-hmm. the title company, the attorney, if they have a paralegal involved, our team, which is led by the negotiator, and there could be one to two support people, and then corporate. So you could have eight or nine people working on a file. Now, you're going to communicate with three or four of them, but there could be other people touching the file, working, doing things with the servicer, packaging, quality control, because every file that we work before it goes to the servicer, an, another set of eyes reviews it, looks at every contract to make sure everything's legible, that every initial's in place, that every signature's in place, nothing's expired, all the documents answer the questions that are relative to the transaction, and then it's forwarded on in whatever manner that servicer prescribes, whether it's electronic data, whether it's email. On occasion, we still have faxes with some of the folks out there, but most of them are moving away from that, uh, whatever it takes. And then now we know the timeline of the service, and we're able to move the file in the process. So uh, how many people on your team uh, within the company for a closure response team are, are, are handling short sales? How big is your operation? Well, our corporate office where we run the company is 10 people. Uh, Our back office, the processing staff right now is somewhere 28 to 32 plus or minus, but we also have a pool of additional people that we use that are, you know, they're not on uh, every file. So we we have a tremendous staff, over 250 employees uh, company-wide. But again, those are, most of those employees are with DSS, our partner. We share a lot of them. Right. And we're always adding staff as as we grow. So we're typically adding one uh, to two processors a month to our team as we ramp up our volumes. Now, uh, are you participating in any top-down models with uh, lenders? And you, you mentioned earlier you had some servicer-driven short sales you were participating in. Do you assign short sales to agents? Do you guys have that capability? Yes, we do. I mean, what's interesting is we've spent the, the past two and a half years developing the relationships, working them. Uh, it seems like every time a servicer is sued by someone for, for FDCPA issues, it slows it down even further. Uh, but we have put out quite a few. And we're working with uh, several pools of loans that are under the HAFA program that we are slowly disseminating out. Mm-hmm. Our, our, our viewpoint, and we've, you know, we've been looked at this by a variety of people in the market, is that what we have built is very similar to an asset management uh, company, very similar to the REO side. So the transactions that come into us, we can assign them to realtors. We can track and manage it. We can guide the realtor. The caveats in in, in those circumstances with the servicers is that those agents have to be trained and active on our system. They have to be familiar and have done files with us, having gone to one of our trainings perhaps. We have a variety of of, uh, uh, issues that have to be addressed uh, for the servicer to to engage uh, that particular agent. We've also built our agent finder, which is being released at the end of the month, which will allow any servicer or community help group or anyone else that's looking for support or guidance on doing a short sale with access to finding a realtor who is tied to the foreclosure response team to choose them to help them on their transaction. And it's a very powerful tool. When you pull up and you look at it, you can see all the – you pull up by zip code. You can see all the realtors in that zip code. You can see their rating on our system. You can see their success rates. It's a tremendous opportunity for the servicers and for consumers to go to those realtors who are successful at working short sales and help those people grow their business. So there's a lot of benefits to being part of our network, not just a processing platform where we're going to get your deals done and help you increase your income, but also you know, our leads for listing program where if you put transactions up on our system, we have a partnership with a, a, a leads generation group where we're giving out leads to, to realtors who's doing business with us. We have our training summits, which are a boot camp geared towards helping the realtor take their business to the next level, really focus on short sales, what you need to do, how to find them. I mean, one of the great factoids out there, and I know this is in the state of Florida, I don't know the other states offhand, but of all the foreclosure filings, only 10% of the properties are actually listed for sale 
that have received default notices. And wow. I think that number is pretty consistent across the country because mm -hmm. most homeowners don't know what to do. They mm -hmm. don't know who to turn to. They need guidance. They need support. So we're always trying to help our realtor clients better position themselves to speak to those homeowners, to find those homeowners, and to serve as, as their support and guidance. Because we see point blank, a lot of the realtors tell us that every closed short sale generates anywhere from three to eight, maybe more referrals to people they know who have issues. And, and it's just an enormous uh, uh, growth effect for, for realtors that are doing short sales. So, Stephen, you just got the attention of a lot of agents on the phone here, I assure you, because um, you're taking a holistic approach to the to this whole problem. First, you are assisting agents in uh, getting the transactions done. I can't tell you I mean, how many agents I've talked to that are just frustrated with short sales. They spend all this time, all this money, all this, all this work, and it doesn't close. Uh, so being able to help them uh, basically outsource all that time and effort uh, to your organization. And then if they become a member of your network, uh, they can participate in the top-down model where you've got you know, you've got short sales from servicers coming to you, and you're assigning them to those agents. And, of course, they have to be qualified to participate. Does this cost the agent any money to be a part of your network? No, we, we do not charge the realtor anything to join. There is no cost to use the system on an ongoing basis, and there is no fixed cost on the transaction at closing. So there are many of our agents who work with us. It doesn't cost them a dime to work with us. Uh, if we are referring servicer generated or, or community help group or other leads out to agents that convert to listings, there is a referral fee for those. But other than that, as long as the agent works through our attorney system, there's no fees to anyone in our transactions. Well, that's really incredible. Um, no fees, no cost. Just let me, let me qualify that again. As long as there is an attorney who is part of our network is involved right. in that transaction. Now, right. one caveat is that we are not in all 50 states. So if you're in a state where we don't have an attorney, then we need to talk because we'll get an attorney in board. So right. work and therefore we can take care of you. So right. we return to our agents. One of the beauty th beautiful things about our system is that it's an open network. Mm -hmm. So if you're in Riverside, California, for an example, mm -hmm. and you're working with a great attorney who really knows how to do foreclosure offense, really is good with working with that consumer, I want them on my network because they're going to help us help you. Okay. If you're working with a great escrow or title company in Phoenix, Arizona, right. and I want to know about them because I want them on our network so they can work with us and help you with your closings. We want to bring in those people that are comfortable working with the realtors as long as those people are qualified and we feel they add value to our network and will conform and abide by the rules that we have set forth. Well, that's, uh, that's really good information. How many agents are in your network right now? We have active on our system. I think the most recent count is somewhere in the 28 to 2,900 range. But we have in our database people we're talking to who have shown interest in working with us well over 10,000. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people slowly you know, they get comfortable with us. They understand what we do. We talk to them a few times. Then all of a sudden they start doing transactions with us. So, you know, we're trying to grow that significantly because we, we feel we can add a lot of value to most realtors' business models. So would you say that an agent that is using your company for the processing related services of a short sale, uh, that they're probably well positioned to participate in the top-down referral model from you? Yeah, absolutely. But again, I, I emphasize that, that don't, don't come to me to join because you're looking for referrals. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had a lot of agents who said, hey, you know, I'll join up, but I only want to work with you if you give me a referral. Right. It's not how we work because mm -hmm. the, the banks, I mean, we're, we're tied in with a lot of the banks. We're t you know, we do a lot of processing work for all the agents in foreclosure.com. They mm -hmm. have relationships. It is a slow trickle. The banks are scared of their shadows as it relates to giving out this information on their borrowers to third-party groups to contact them to get them into the HAFA program and to sign the SSA. It right. is a long, difficult. So I, I, I emphasize, we've got it, we're working it, but right. it is not. That's not the reason to work with me. Right. It's, it, it's, right. it's a nice bonus as it happens. Okay. All right. Well, I, that's a great disclosure, and uh, so people know, you know, uh, from the beginning that um, there is that opportunity. Uh, but uh, it is a it ha it will be something that will develop over time. Cool. So, uh, but there are many realtors that really don't have a problem with getting the short sales. 
you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're doing the work, they're knocking on doors and what have you. It's it's closing the trend, the transaction. So let's talk about that. Let's dive into a few of these bullets, and then we're going to uh, open up the line for questions. Uh, so the first one is qualifying your seller. Are they really a good client? Let's, let's be 